I mean, ladies, thank you very much uh, for the invitation to ICPD and to meet you. Uh, I think it's quite a pleasure for me. The title of my speech, and I will keep it in time frame because uh, we owe you at 3.25 a coffee break. I'm totally aware as a coffee drinker. Uh, to speak about crisis management and cultural diplomacy. Uh, allow me first of all, and you may, may wonder, I'm a fan of crisis. <laughs> Why? Uh, I'm a little bit old-fashioned. I learned the old Greek language. And if you know the word crisis is coming from krino, and that means to judge and to decide. So far, a period of crisis is a period where we have to judge the situation and where we have to decide. Obviously, and uh, maybe you are shocked, uh, for my feeling, sometimes we have not yet enough crisis that we are really able to make our decisions. Uh, a second comment I want to do, we don't have a banking crisis, we don't have an economic crisis, we don't have a euro crisis, we have a crisis of politics and politician. I think uh, so far not enough decisions are done, not enough judgment is here for sure existing. And so I'm inviting you, if the second part of my title is cultural diplomacy, today that I'm focusing uh, on this, how we are coming to a better knowledge about our own situation, how we are coming to a better knowledge, what has to be done, in, in which direction uh, we are moving. Another remark, uh, let's change the approach to crisis, especially in the context of diplomacy. Diplomacy, what we are doing, and this institute, I think, is a part of it, is not the old-fashioned diplomacy uh, which we learned. I think uh, somebody of a horse is coming with a letter from one king to the other and delivering it and so on and so on. Or huge congresses, Berlin Congress, Vienna Congress, that's gone. I think all these meetings you can see in the media, G20, G80, G whatever, I think is the last rest of a development because the real decisions are happen happening in between and not at these meetings. The Vienna Congress, for example, in 1815, they did really decisions on the spot, which is done. Every decision which is done now by the conferences is already prepared, agreed, and so on and so on, and is happening quite uh, on another level. The second difference is, uh, for a very long time we were looking to the crisis uh, mainly by military cases and by wars. I think here uh, the danger of uh, uh, crisis uh, is more spread. For example, our climate development is a crisis. I think no army, no shooting, and so on and so on, but tremendous changes changing the conditions under which we are living and creating a lot of difficulties. You are aware that at the end of the Roman Empire, peoples were moving. Uh, they were moving from Inner Asia or wherever, uh, going to Europe, going to what is now Greece, going uh, to Rome, and so on and so on. This was not the moving of tourists. I think it was out of specific reasons, because they got the message, it's better living in Rome uh, than from where we are coming. And I think this is similar, that has not yet changed. I think all the mobility questions, what is happening here is, there is a part where we can better live as we are living, uh, but this is also a, a creating a lot of crisis, or it's raising the question, can we improve the conditions uh, under which uh, people are living, that they are not moving? That's also, if you want, crisis management. I think what is the real problem, and here cultural diplomacy has to uh, come. Uh, I fear that we are living in a time of tremendous changes. Nearly in a very short time, everything is changing, the conditionality under which we are living. I'm not quite sure that we are aware of this. Beg your pardon, I give you some primitive examples. The downfall of the Iron Curtain in 89, great. Huh? But a question especially to the Western Europeans, have we relearned Europe? I'm always doing, I, I'm traveling around in the center of Europe, campaigning for Europe and so on and so on. I'm sometimes, I'm doing it in a very primitive way, I'm raising geographical questions, even in my home country. One of my geographical questions is always, 
Do you know how far is it from Vienna to Prague or, or to, to Salzburg? What is closer? 100% are always answering, Salzburg is closer, huh? because uh, it's in Austria. Prague is closer. 60 kilometers, I think, 6 kilometers, it's extremely short, but it is closer. In our feeling, it's a little bit more far off. That's a consequence of the Iron Curtain. I think here, neighbors are leaving on great distance. I have even more horrible example. Uh, how far is it uh, from Vienna to the Swiss border uh, in comparison from Vienna to Ushkorod? Because the first question is coming out, where is Ushkorod? What is Ushkorod? <laughs> that is the first bigger city in the Ukraine. Nobody is really aware in this part of uh, Europe where I am coming out. This is geography, it's extremely primitive, but if you are looking to the real crisis, for example, concerning Syria, Iraq, Iran, and so on and so on, do we have a real knowledge about these areas? I think maybe we know the map. I think a lot of uh, mistakes were done as these maps were created after the downfall of the Ottoman Empire. Uh, in all my love to the Foreign and uh, Commonwealth Office uh, of the British and to the French, they took a lineal and they created the borders, which has nothing to do with the real situation here. I think it is a mixture where sometimes some doubts uh, are justified to say, are they able to live together or should we have another map? I'm not campaigning for a new map. I think we shall overcome the question of borders. That's a real issue. Uh, but a lot of problems are coming out of it. Also, I think uh, in this part of Europe where I'm coming out, if it's spoken about the Islam, I think it is moving quite quickly to Islamists and every uh, man or woman raising the voice concerning Islam is said, okay, you are a Taliban. I think this is a primitive way to judge a situation. There is no distinction done. I think we have to separate things. What is helpful? What is really difficult? What is in between? What can be really changed? That's cultural diplomacy. You can say it's education, it is learning on the subject, uh, or, or whatever. And in this context of cultural di diplomacy, I'm asking to focus on the media. Uh, if you took part in the last panel discussion, a lot of our problems which were mentioned were created by the medias. Uh, by a real populist, a primitive move uh, and presentation uh, by the medias. I think we don't know anything uh, by the reporting of the medias, but, but we are getting an opinion. Uh, I think we are learning against whom we shall be. Uh, always, I think, uh, all the difficulties uh, between nations, human beings, and so on and so on, are created by the move, let's be against somebody. Uh, I think that's undemocratic. I think we have, if we are Democrats, uh, to do, uh, to look, uh, why can we be in favor? Which parts of the opinion of the other is helpful? Which can I understand, which I'm not understanding? So far, I have a raised question. How can we move closer together uh, in a loyal understanding? This is cultural uh, uh, diplomacy. And I think it's also the job of the civil society Personally, I have to confess, I have some doubts concerning the civil society, how it is done today. I think we have a lot of NGOs, beg your pardon, we are in the midst of an NGO. Uh, I think uh, there is more competition between NGOs and cooperation. And I think it is extremely necessary to have a closer uh, cooperation on common aims. Common aims, I think they have to be formulated in discussion between for example, NGOs in the civil society and also by the social medias. I think uh, in the moment it's a la mode to say the social media will save us all and so on and so on. May I say we are in midst the development, we have not arrived at the end. Because one of the problems of the social media, it is only a bilateral relation between you and me, I am addressing you. How to build up a common opinion by social media? In a certain way, they are not yet social. I'm really convinced that, that they will move in this direction, uh, but I think uh, it might happen in this direction. Coming back to crisis management. I think uh, this is one of the tremendous changes for a very long time. We had the feeling uh, a crisis uh, urges military action, that's it. What has been learned, and here I have to say many thanks uh, 
to the American, the government of President Truman and to George C. Marshall. They learned out of this what happened after the First World War by the downfall of those countries uh, uh, who were defeated. Uh, that out of this Mussolini, Hitler and so on and so on was created because the living conditions were horrible. I think here the Marshall Plan was a great contribution of crisis management happening. And so far sometimes being involved in some crisis afterwards, uh, the example of Marshall Plan uh, is uh, really always mentioned as extremely important. We are moving in this direction. I was involved in this crisis management. The first action were by the United States after the Balkan Wars, after the Dayton Agreement. They created the Southeast European Cooperative Initiative. We did very limited things. Uh, and afterwards, in 1999, and this is thanks to Joschka Fischer, I have to say, the Stability Pact for Southeast Europe was created, I think, uh, to make some actions uh, that the whole region is not falling down. Job is not yet done, to say it quite clearly. We have still to learn out of it, but something happened here uh, in the right opinion. But what is existing? I think uh, for a lot of public opinions in the different member states of the European Union, on the more Western or on the more richer side, uh, looking to the Balkans, they're all saying, job is done, okay, they are now independent, they have to do their job, if they, are, they shall be able, and if they are not able, I think they are not yet de democratic, uh, they are not doing the right, right job, and so on and so on. I think to learn is a long process, and it has to be supported. There's always, I give you one example, criticism on the judicial systems in, in these countries. Uh, they put to be better, the quality should be higher, and so on and so on, because nobody is really able to get the right uh, decision by courts and so on and so on. My answer is always, okay, you can kick a minister of justice from one day to the other. Can you kick out all the judges from one day to the other? You need new judges, better trained judges, and that is lasting a longer time. And even you can go deeper to some. I give you an example in which I'm involved. We built up in the Balkans, and I think you can uh, do it is, as a comparison to other parts, uh, a center for democracy and reconciliation in Southeast Europe. What did we do? We were looking to the history books of the different countries of the region. And I may tell you, it is a nightmare. Because in all these history books you have Greater Romania, Greater Bulgaria, Greater Greece, Greater Serbia, Greater Albania, Greater ever what uh, you want. I'm born in Greater Germany as an Austrian, and I'm always telling them we know the result of such a nonsense, but that's not enough, I think, because nobody's really aware what happened uh, here uh, in this time. What did we do? We did not rewrite the history because it would not be accepted. Uh, it's too deep in our education system. We confronted in books the different perception of history. Though you're from one page, a map, let me say, of Greater Serbia, and then you have a map of Greater Bulgaria or Romania, and if you're looking and comparing that, so far you can see that different regions are covered by different powers, with different results, and they can learn out of it. It's even more tougher if you're putting in caricatures, the one about the others. It's really a horrible uh, uh, history. May I say, and here in favor of the European Commission, we got some money after a very long fight to campaign and to make seminars for the history teachers. I think it will last longer, but something is happening on this, and that's extremely uh, important. I think the understanding of history is a question of cultural diplomacy, mm -hmm. because we are all based on history. And if you are not doing it in the right way, not only the empire strikes back, as you can see in the movies, also history is striking back. It plays, uh, I think, an extremely role. It's only a small part of that what has to be done uh, here uh, by cultures. I think uh, you have to spread over and you may adapt it to all the crisis on economy uh, and on social affairs. And we are confronted even with more crisis. We discussed uh, here at the board an activity concerning the youngsters and their unemployment. Uh, my dear friends, here a, ra a, a, a big uh, question is raising. What is uh, the aim of cultural diplomacy on this? 
I think to teach the different countries where you can get some jobs that they are able to take others and to make the consequences out of it. I am a Jean Monnet professor. We discussed at our last meeting, there should be more training courses on other languages. For sure, it's easier for the Spanish to go to South America or Spanish speaking South America, the Portuguese uh, to Brazil. But we need, for example, uh, German teaching courses uh, in Spain, which are not so much existing, that they are able to, to go to Germany or wherever jobs are available. I think uh, my job is not to say everything has to be done by the Germans. Everything has to be done by all of us uh, on this, that we are avoiding uh, the crisis here existing. I think we need also some uh, uh, cultural diplomacy to avoid uh, a certain kind of populism which is existing. The last message I got from the European Parliament, from the committee being responsible, I think they want to reintroduce visas. They want to reintroduce visas. I think that's a knockout decision for a common Europe. Uh, the argument is officially the Romas are moving and so on and so on. And uh, for example, two countries, the latest income are not yet prepared following all uh, what are the rules uh, and, and so on and so on. The real argument they cite is we have elections and so far we need an activity that we can convince our voters that we are going the right way. With visas, future of Europe. I think that's a tremendous thing which we have to move in the public opinion for sure in the right direction. So far I think uh, uh, cultural diplomacy is also the right management of migration. As I have mentioned it for the environment and also concerning the gender questions and so on and so on. I think I can, can continue endless. These are all fields which are of great importance. And we have to be diplomats. Uh, that means to bring up arguments in favor of our position of a better mutual understanding. The real question as a precondition that we are able to do crisis management, that we are understanding each other. There's a very good word, it's also coming out of the old Greek language, empathy. To get a feeling, to have a feeling in, that we are thinking, thinking also in the category, uh, of the category in the others. That's quite necessary. We have to understand each other. Because my freedom, it's legitimate to speak about my freedom, as an end uh, at the freedom of the other. I think by this it is limited. But we have another understanding. I'm translating an old Viennese word. Uh, everybody is considering him or herself. Only me, I am considering myself. And out of this situation, a lot of difficulties and tensions are in reality coming because we need this empathy to the other. So far, my contribution, I am over three minutes. I think, am I allowed to say coffee break or is it too early? Well, Thank you very much. Mr. Prime Minister, I believe that uh, the audience wouldn't let you go without asking one question at least. Okay. Shall we do it? Yes, please. Uh, thank you for, the, for this uh, interest presentation. I think you give many points for cultural diplomacy and how can we get out of the crisis. The crisis now is not the European crisis only, but it hit all over the world. All over the world is now suffering from this crisis. But there, in our third world, we are suffering more uh, from individualism. Globalization may uh, kill the nation state and nationalism, which was, in my opinion, was a strength power for the nation. Now we, we become more individuals. We are, as, as you said, I am, and we are not concerned about the others. And, and, and when this crisis came to all over the world or all countries, they can't manage it. But you, you suffered more from that because from our world, all people were 
were wanting to, to come to Europe or USA to get out from this crisis and the poverty. And that is creating more problem for you also as for us, because we are losing the workers, we are losing the human resource in our countries. Also, in, in globalization era, the economic is, was not in the same stage with the politics, I think. The, the multinationalism, uh, multinational country, uh, companies took all the resource and they went away to Asia where is cheap workers and, and let the Europe and other country moving all over. Yeah, but how can you, this multiculturalism, I, I, I will have to, to, to come to my question that, for example, Islam and Islamist, the war of, on terrorism, put all Islam, all nation, with their resources in an, another side, and the other in other side, and make a war, unseen war between them. In fact, they have resources, and they have, seen, how can you, after two decades of this war on terrorism, how can you manage or re-manage the relation between all cultures, Muslim and non-Muslim, in, 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 by respecting the culture and religious and making a new page of uh, combination or how to deal with each other to get out of this crisis. Thank you. First, allow me uh, to make one remark. Uh, looking at these political uh, discussions, I'm refusing to use religion. Uh, it is done. You are totally right. But Muslim countries, I think there are a lot of differences between Muslim countries uh, and the question how developed they are and what are the social problems, economic problems. That's not only religion. Religion is sometimes influencing economic systems. Uh, I think you have some distinctions between Protestant countries and Catholic countries, uh, in, even in national economy. I think Adam Smith would not have been possible in a Catholic country uh, uh, some hundred years ago. Uh, but may I say, being in, having been involved in the Balkans, I was always really fed up to read the Orthodox Serbs, the Catholic Croats, and the Islamic Bosniaks. Not true, because I know a lot of Serbs which are, who are not believers. I know a lot of Croatians who are not believers. I knew, knew a lot of Bosniaks who are not believers. But religion is used to campaign against each other. That's, for my opinion, uh, obligation of re religions, of churches, and so on and so on, to come closer together, which they are not doing. They are misused by politics, and they are not hindering the politicians uh, to be misused. Second point, you are totally right concerning the responsibility of Europe. Here I may say my answer, uh, I think, won't satisfy you. What we have to learn is not only to relearn Europe. I think we have to learn that we Europeans are living in the global village. And we are only part of them. And the less important part as we have been in the past. We have sometimes an indirectly colonial thinking still, which for sure is a mistake. But this is not only up to the Europeans. I think it's also a question of dialogue. And so far, it's also a question of the development of the political systems in the other countries, that they are able to have this dialogue and to have it in the right way. Because sometimes I've seen the impression, OK, the Europeans in the past wanted the power. What are the others not doing? They want the power. Huh? I think it's quite difficult to say that uh, the government of China is moving in a real democratic way on equality here in the world. No, huh? for sure. Look to what is done concerning islands and so on and so on and campaigning. That has to be outspoken and it is extremely important. That's a question of cultural diplomacy. Okay? Thank you very much. We all wish that the, all leaders in Europe were thinking, were approaching the question from the positive side as you did. Okay. Thank you very much. Please join me to thank His Excellency Mr. Dushek for that. Thank you.